Hey everybody, it's Thomas and Tanner Gallant from Maritime Hockey, and with us today we got Dalhousie New Brunswick native Marie Jo Peltier, uh, NWHL All Star defenseman. Uh, how are you today, MJ? I'm great, thanks. How are you guys? Not too bad. So, being born and raised in Dalhousie, New Brunswick, who got you into playing hockey, and who was your influences on and off the ice? Yeah, um, so I grew up um, playing hockey with my oldest brother, mostly, and my parents. Um, they got me on the ice at a pretty young age. Um, you know, I have two older brothers, so we we played mini sticks around the house, and then once... Uh, once I saw my brother skating outside on the outdoor um, outdoor rink that my dad would make for us, um, I just wanted to, to be like him and play hockey um, just like he did. Um, so, you know, I, I started up playing hockey on the outdoor rink with uh, my mom and dad helped me um, and t- taught me how to, to skate. Um, so really my family was my biggest inspiration growing up. Um, like I said, I... I I looked up to my my oldest um, brother Robert a lot because he played hockey um, at various levels. So um, he was a big inspiration for me. Um, also, my oldest cousin Karin, um, she was a female hockey player that I looked up to. You know, growing up, um, she uh, she was also a defenseman. So um, I looked up to her too and, and wanted to, to be just like her. Um, she played for Team New Brunswick and things like that and went to the Canada game. So um, that's that's someone who I also looked up to um, growing up. So is that where you kind of started playing defense is from your cousin there or is that kind of just how you started there? Um, so both my cousin and also my oldest brother, Robert, he, he started playing um, defense as his um, hockey career and then he switched to forward so I guess it was kind of um, just who I, I seen um, playing and then I, I just I just fell in love with that position. So you played your high school career at Ross A. Netherwood High School it's at the other end of the province how did you end up playing there and maybe you can talk a bit about your high school hockey career? Yeah so um, <laughs> following in my brother's footsteps again he went to RNS um, his grade 10 and 11 year um, and at the time there wasn't much of female hockey um, in the area where I grew up. Um, I grew up playing um, on co-ed teams up until um, Bantam age which is where I um, transitioned to just playing with um, girls. Um, I played in Bathurst for two years um, and then after that there wasn't um, there wasn't a lot of girls in the area. A lot of them graduated. Um, so I would have had to travel um, anyways with um, with the midget program. So um, I decided for me, it was best to go away. Um, and um, RNS was an option for me and a close option, even if it was uh, further away. Um, it was still in the province and I was able to come home um, you know almost every every month to see my family so that was important to me but um, it gave me the exposure that I needed um, you know by universities and things like that so um, I was very fortunate to go to Ross and Netherwood school. I really enjoyed my um, experience there. Um, I met a lot of amazing people and even academically it was such an amazing school. Um, I have so many great things to say about um, about our nest and, and, and I'm very blessed to have gone there. Yeah. So you talked a lot about your past family members playing hockey, uh, but what point of your life did you know that you want to play hockey at a professional level? Was it when you were at RNS or when was that kind of around? I mean, I, when I was at RNS, I, I had been playing um, for a few years for like Team New Brunswick, uh, mm-hmm. Team Atlantic, um, and I think it's when I went to the Team Canada camp um, my senior year at RNS that I kind of realized, you know what, like I can do this. Um, mm. And then I can play at, at a high level. And when I committed to UNH um, and, and played my first year at UNH, 
and I was in the mix um, during the game, every, every game, my freshman year, you know, playing power play, playing PK. Um, I played a lot of minutes. That's kind of when I realized um, that I belong here. And um, when I learned more about the NWHL and um, when they reached out um, the summer before my first year in the league, um, that's kind of when I realized, you know what, this is something that I can do. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Yeah. So now that you mentioned NWHL, just looking at the current season, you know, you started in the bubble, um, which was suspended until from COVID. I assume that was difficult for all players, but what were some of the challenges you faced when you were in the bubble? Yeah, it was definitely a different experience than a normal season. Um, just the preparation leading up to it, um, you know, being on a team where half our team was Canadian, half was American. So at a certain point, you know, we were um, practicing in, in actually three different countries because we had two players from Slovakia. So it was a bit challenging leading up to the bubble. And then just at the bubble, I think one of the biggest challenges was um, it was just so it was a condensed season. So I don't remember the last time I played you know, that many games in such a short period of time. So um, recovering from um, games, um, that was probably the biggest, um, the biggest thing that was, um, we had to really focus on the recovery process. So um, I'd say that was one of the biggest struggles was, was playing that many games in such a short period of time. Um, but other than that, it was just so fun to be to being playing games again and, and being back on the ice. Yeah. And I know as currently as we speak, the NWHL hasn't really announced when the season will resume this year. But how do you keep yourself mentally and physically prepared to play again after such a long pause? Yeah, I mean, normally um, I'm not someone that, you know, skates in the summer. Mm. Um, I take my summers off. I've been doing that pretty much my whole life. I just, being from Dalhousie, there wasn't much, you know, availability around. So I always took the summers off growing up. I played soccer. Um, so that kept me busy. And um, when the season came around, it I was excited for it. I was hungry to be back on the ice. Mm. So it's going to be a bit longer than, than normal. Um, but, you know, just staying active, um, working out, um, and then once, you know, the next season comes around, it's going to be to, I'm, I'm going to be excited to be back on the ice and excited to, to get going again. So MJ, looking at the Buttes roster, you guys got a great young core that's already making an impact. So what's the next step your team has to take to become a championship contender? Yeah, I mean, this year we did bring um, a lot of new faces to the roster and I think it helped us a lot. Um, a lot of girls with you know, division one, um, experience, um, over in the U S side. And, you know, even like Autumn McDougal, um, who won national championship with the university of Alberta, um, who's from Nova Scotia. And, um, we brought a lot of depth with Carly Jackson in net. Um, I think with the season that we had, it was being, um, a shorter condensed season. I think, things could have looked a lot different for us if we had played um, a full season. And if we had the preparation that we, we normally would have, if we would have all practiced together. Um, so I think with the season coming up, if, if whoever comes back and um, for the new faces on the team, I think, you know, if we keep that core that um, we will build off of last season, um, you know, we, I think we, we improved from the previous season, but I think that we could have done a lot, a lot more, um, if things, you know, would have worked out differently, but, um, every team, I believe this season has improved tremendously. Um, you know, you saw Connecticut up there. Mm. Um, so it was just, it was just awesome to see and, and so fun to play. Yeah. And and you talked about a little bit about Carly Jackson. She had an unbelievable year in the few games that we, we did have this year. But as a defender, that must give you a lot of confidence with having a good goaltender behind you. Definitely. Um, it was a lot of fun playing in front of Carly. Um, like you said, it just gives you that confidence and, and that trust that, 
you know, she's going to have my back if ever, mm. you know, I create a turnover or on men rushes, you know, things like that. Or she'll be able to come up with the big save that we need to, to gain momentum. So, um, no, she's been huge um, in net for us. And I'm definitely excited to be back on the ice with her. I've played against her for, you know, four years at UNH and I had been on the same team with her with Team Atlantic. So it was a lot of fun then and, and it's a lot of fun now too. Yeah, that's perfect. And, uh, you know, this is your second season in with the Buttes. Um, how has the fan base been in Buffalo in sports of women hockey? I know it's kind of hard to gauge this year, but just in general. They honestly are the best fans in the league. I'm a little biased, but no, they're <laughs> honestly, they're, they're incredible. Um, it, it really like, it, it just warms your heart as a player to see um, the fans that, that come out and, and watch you and make posters and banners and um, just even travel, you know, like we have to travel to five or six hours to games, but they do it too. And to see them in the, in the crowd, um, you know, when we were playing up in Boston or against the Riveters in New Jersey to see them there, like it's, it's incredible. They, they really are big fans of the, the Buttes, but also the NWHL, which is awesome to see. And, um, you know, we got fans all over the world, so um, it's pretty cool. And, and they're amazing, um, amazing to have um, in Buffalo. Yeah, and, and I feel like once we get back into regular with the fans in attendance, it's going to be great having Toronto nearby, which will have quite a rivalry, which will be fun to watch, I think. Definitely. I think that's going to be a really great rivalry and a lot of fun to play, um, play in those games. Mm. So uh, you must notice that uh, there's been a big increase in NWHL viewership and awareness over the past few years. You know, we've just been watching the last few and it's, it's been great watching how much this league has grown. Uh, but what do you think has the big, been the biggest reason behind this? And how do you think the NWHL could continue this trend of growth? I think there's just more awareness uh, of the league. Um, through social media, um, you know, with the Twitch um, broadcasting. Um, I think that in itself um, has made it accessible for people to, to watch um, all over the world um, online. So that's, that's a, a huge uh, step. Um, and just, you know, the word of mouth of the NWHL goes a long way as well. New fans joining and, and talking to other people about the the league. And, you know, you would see a lot of in the chats on, on Twitch, you know, I'm new to the NWHL or um, this is my first game I'm watching. So um, I think it's just awareness of the league and, and getting, getting your name out there. It makes a big difference. Yeah, and the Twitch numbers were up quite a bit. It was it was quite incredible, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so last season, you had an impressive rookie season with the Buttes. Uh, you were named finalist for Newcomer of the Year. You made the All-Star Game, and you broke a league record for most power play points in a season. Personally, for you as a player, what do you think the next step is? Um, honestly, I just want to keep keep – playing how I'm playing, um, not overthinking it. Um, I've really been enjoying playing hockey and, um, I think that's where, um, you know, the, the looseness, um, and just being able to, to be the player that I can be, um, and not to mention, or not, and not to forget to mention, you know, the players that I've played with, um, has helped me, um, with those accolades, but, um, you know, it's it's a team game, and I just want to keep being that player that I that I can be for my for my teammates and making them better and um, and seeing our team succeed. So uh, you kind of touched on it a little bit. So being from the Maritimes, we've seen an increase of local talent in the last couple of years. I think we got five in the NWHL. You got Blair, Turnbull, Jill Saulnier, and then there's a few women coming up through the university ranks. What do you think the key for the Maritimes of been in developing so many good young women hockey players? Great question. Um, it's people like, you know, Jill Sonia and, and Blair Turnbull that, um, you know, they, they, um, they paved the way for, um, for myself and, and others 
Um, and, and, you know, being at the professional level now, you know, it, it, you realize the, the imp impact that you can have for the next generation. Um, you know, young girls look up to you and, um, and just like I did growing up. So um, I think it's important that, you know, we keep growing the game um, and we keep, we keep inviting young girls out to skate. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing is get, getting the next generation um, out on the ice and experiencing what it is like to play hockey. You know, it's, it's such a fun sport. Um, and um, we just, we just have to keep, keep getting, getting kids out there and, um, and playing the game. That's how it starts. Um, it's getting out on the ice and seeing, um, seeing female players um, play the game at that professional level um, allows young girls, you know, to, to dream of, of playing at that next level. Um, so I think with, with the increase in, in female players at the next level in the Maritimes in Atlanta, Canada has, has really allowed young girls to see that and, and to want to do that too. Well, MJ, I think that's the questions, all the questions we have today. Um, I want to thank you very much. Me and Thomas both want to thank you very much for coming on talking about some about your career. Um, You've done really great things so far, and we, we can't wait to see what you do in the future. Thank you so much for having me on.